you are most probably asking yourself what did Dio do to prepare for AWS Solution Architect Professional and DevOps Professional. So in this video, I will be taking you through the whole process that I followed to prepare for these two of the hardest IT certifications. I've been in IT now for 10 years and in my 10 years of uh, IT uh, experience and my career, I've written many many certifications uh, before uh, moving to cloud public cloud i used to be more in the private cloud working mostly on a uh, on oracle technology i've worked a lot on ovm on um, logical domains on the spark machines so in that process in my years of working with Oracle products, I made sure that I certify uh, as a way of showing um, my knowledge when it comes to Oracle products. And um, I have about 13 to 14 certifications uh, regarding, um, regarding Oracle products. And I've written Red Hat certifications as well and other certifications like Cisco. Unfortunately, my Cisco certificate uh, expired many, many years ago, the CCNA. And please um, believe me when I say to you, the AWS Solution Architect Professional and DevOps are one of the hardest in my 10 years of IT career. You know, I really felt the exam when I was sitting there, it was a torture for me. The process of preparing for these exams felt like a torture as well. Because you see, I used to put aside two to three hours every day to um, <clears throat> read and watch videos on uh, A Cloud Guru, Linux Academy, and as well on Udemy. So what I've noticed is the, let me start with the DevOps because I wrote the DevOps, uh, DevOps uh, professional certificate uh, exam before the solution architect professional. I actually started preparing for this exam um, in June, uh, beginning of June, let me say beginning of June. And I actually started with, um, a cloud guru so i i think after a day or so i noticed that i don't really like the style of the guy that was teaching them you know and um, i felt like they're not going deep into the subjects like your cicd your um, availability zone uh, what to call your fault tolerance availability high uh, high availability and all those things so i feel like they're not going deep into this uh, in these topics then I moved to Linux Academy. Linux Academy it was better than A Cloud Guru, but the problem was the, the the course on Linux Academy. The guy was very very slow. I couldn't I mean sit there and just listen to him and concentrate. Now and then I'll find myself thinking about something else, losing uh, um, focus because the guy is very slow, and. But I must say that the, 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 the course was much better than was much better than what I, I found on Eight Guru. I, I, I don't know, but um, I was disappointed at uh, what Eight Cloud Guru was offering. So while I was watching that, I felt as well like, you know what, this is not going to be enough for me to prepare for this exam. And while I was still there struggling and you know, I spoke to a friend of mine who happened to write DevOps uh, certification uh, before, uh, I think in May. And he said to me, look, uh, go to Udemy and buy a, a course by, um, I think it's Mavic, uh, I can't remember the guy, man, I don't know why. But yeah, I will check the name of the guy again. But. I, I bought the course, the ratings were very good, we were sitting at 4.7 out of 5, and that was very good. So I bought the course, I went through it, wow, it was good. 
very very good everything was um uh what do you call practicals and i could follow along and yeah so after that what i did i then bought the practice exams uh from uh what you call this i think it's called dojo dojo tutorials i bought devops uh, exam uh, practice exam there and i went through it uh, several times it was very good i remember the first time i wrote it i got 50 percent and i was concerned i was worried but what is most important there is not getting 100 percent what is important is being able to understand why certain answers were wrong and others were right if you understand the reason why something is wrong and if the other one is right you'll be able to make right decisions next time you don't have to try to memorize the questions and the answers there you won't pass the aws devops so i then went through it several times and as i said when i started this video i said it felt like a torture the reason why it felt like torture is because you see a dojo tries to simulate the actual exam so there is other practice exam the way you get 75 questions three hours you know and um, you, you need to finish those 75 questions in that three hours and it's very difficult because after that you need to now review all the questions and see the ones that you you were not sure and the ones that you got them wrong and understand why they are wrong and all that so all in all in a day when you go through that uh, practice exam you might spend literally five hours i'm not playing you will spend five hours just for you to understand everything then so i did those things several times and on my last two days I was not reading anything i was just doing those uh, practice exam trying to understand why uh, other um, topics um, were sort of like difficult for me and making sure that i i iron out on topics that were confusing or not that i was not clear on and i went but um uh, i went to 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 write an exam it was a three three and a half hour exam because you, you, as you can hear, I'm not uh, English is not my first language, and um, I was given an accommodation of three hours, you know, and um, and I had prepared enough to a point where I actually were um, finished. I think in two hours, forty five minutes. So I didn't even need that other thirty minutes uh, for non English speakers and. I got 80, 83%. That's not bad. You need 75% to pass the DevOps. Anything less than 75 or 750 out of 1000, it's a fail. So I got 83%. Now let's move to the Solution Architect Professional. The difference between Solution Architect Professional and DevOps Professional is the DevOps the uh, the exam questions are very long and the answers are very long you literally scroll while you are reading you know that's how 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 long it is so don't go there <laughs> thinking that thing will be you know it will be nice to you no it it will be it will torture you the questions are very long the answers as well are like a paragraph but on a solution architect the questions are not long the answers are not long you can literally get a question that is two lines but you can't find that on devops and with on professional but it doesn't mean that it's easy né? it doesn't mean that it's easy because you get two line questions or two three lines they for solution architect they focus on the details you see, you can know that you, you probably everyone knows who has worked on AWS that CloudWatch, that's where you get your logs, you know, and all those things. But they will go to the details of cloud 
watch things that you most probably don't do every day or you know you don't really care that much about them until that exam comes so they go to the details they are more concerned about the details of each and every uh, uh, um, service that is covered by solution architect professional so make sure that you don't um, run through the services when you are preparing make sure you get into the details into the details for example between uh, I am uh, policy and S3 policy the I am policy can only be 10 kilobytes in size the S3 policy can get up to 20 kilobytes so such things I don't think uh, many of us actually even care about or uh, uh, you have ever came across a, a time where your your policy was too too large or more than 10 kilobytes in size you only know those things when you have come across a, a an error where your your policy was more than 10 kilobytes in size things like you know we have got s3 policy you've got i am i am role right if someone assumes a role to access s3 what happens what is the difference between when he doesn't assume a role he comes and try to access the s3 with s3 policy being the one that will uh, decide whether he has got access or not so you need to know details of this thing that when you come and assume a role you lose your initial um, access and other stuff you you will now assume the access of this role right if you wanted to have access to s3 and after s3 take those things and save them to to dynamo db if that role that you are assuming does not have access to dynamo db but only the s3 you will not be able to do that even though your uh, the user that you use before assuming a role had access to DynamoDB. You will not have access to DynamoDB because you are no longer operating as that user that you logged in as, but you'll be operating as the role that you assumed. So I'm just making an example to show you that you really need to understand details of every services that is covered by Solution Architect. All right. So what I did to prepare for Solution Architect um, uh, exam, I bought the exam of, yeah, Stefan Marwick is the one that uh, helped me to prepare for this exam. So I bought the Solution Architect uh, one for, for this one. And so what we did is actually build up on the DevOps uh, course that he did so he if you follow him then you'll have to it's advisable that you start with devops before you move to sys or um, solution architect professional but i know other people wants to go straight for solution architect you might find it difficult um, using his uh, course alone because on the solution architect course He's not doing any practicals. All the practicals are mostly done on the DevOps course. So be careful of that. So I literally watched his videos. Uh, the, the, I finished the course three times because the course is about 12 hours. I made sure that every week I finish it. So I needed three weeks to finish the course. While I was watching that, I will go to Linux Academy to watch uh, the same you know, to, to watch the solution architect the course that they have on Linux Academy I I like I really liked it but it was old it was 2019 uh, version that they never updated but uh, it was very very good I didn't finish it I think I was on 30 percent while this one I finished it three times then I went to Dojo again and I bought a practice exam and that the last week i was just practicing with dojo understanding why i got some of the questions wrong and all that 
and the, the, the interesting thing is uh, for, for me solution architect professional was easier than DevOps DevOps uh, yo, it was difficult you know when I was preparing for it I really had to go extra mile compared to solution architect professional so after that I went to, to, to write and I remember I couldn't even sleep the day before that but you know, I went to, to, to write and I managed to pass the exam. Um, I passed it with about 79%. You might be asking yourself or, or you might be saying, but you said Solution Architect was more easier than the DevOps, but you passed DevOps with higher marks than the Solution Architect. Yeah, the thing is, when I when I went to buy, when I went to ride the solution architect professional, I was very very tired. I failed to sleep until around four in the morning, and my exam was in in the morning ten a.m. So I lit, I had to wake up eight o'clock, prepare nine o'clock, leave the house, and go to the testing station. So I didn't have enough rest, and um, I guess I just make silly mistakes you know and um yeah it was just tough i was tired and but i'm um, thank god that i managed to pass the exam so if you really want to pass i would um advise that you look at um and the guy that i told you about let me check his name again yes yeah, stefan marik check him and I would advise that you start with DevOps before you go to Solution Architect, even though the DevOps is more difficult if you are following him. But if you are using any other material, then I would advise that you start with Solution Architect before you go to DevOps because DevOps is more difficult and it's more intense. The questions are long, the answers are long uh, compared to the Solution Architect professional. Thank you very much.